Hey guys, thanks very much for clicking on the video. This is gonna be an overnight video where I've packed with me my canvas tent, I've got my backpack, axe, saw, sleeping bag, lots of other gear as well. What I've gotta do is get my tent set up, then I've gotta get a fire going, and then cook up some food. First things first, let's get the tent up. So in order to get to my canvas tent, which is tied to my backpack via the bottom straps here, I need to undo this, these axe clips, or these saw clips here that are holding in my axe. Now that I've done that, I've got access down here to get this canvas tent out. And all I do, or tend to do, is just hold these clips here, pull that loop, pull that loop, just to loosen it a little bit, and then the clips actually loosen. These clips go via the main strap here, and they loosen like that. And now I can get a little bit of extra tension, and that just slides up. So, I've made a little nifty carrying thing from Paracord, just to carry the tent. It is fairly heavy, it's a canvas tent, but it's gonna be nice and warm tonight. So you might hear some forestry vehicles in the distance. Uh, it's not too far away from the actual main forest, but I'm here in a lovely deciduous woodland, mostly silver birch. There is the odd oak tree as well. Loads of leaves on the floor. I'm not actually gonna clear the leaves on this floor because my tent, the canvas tent, is a Polish Levu, so it doesn't have a floor to it. And I'm gonna leave these leaves there because they'll act as insulation basically. So no point me sweeping the leaves away going to leave them there but I've got a nice open space here to set the tent up. So the way I've tied this paracord strap on is I've made a little quick release, release loop here and you pull that loop that's just hitched on underneath here so I tuck that around and then I can loosen it by, like that just pulling it and the same with each side so it keeps those two loops ready to tie down next time and all I do now is just pull that loop around there pull that loop around there, and then I keep this as it is for when I want to back away. So this is the Lavu, and it's hard to tell now, but this is actually two ponchos, two canvas ponchos that are, that are buttoned together. Um, I'll show you them in a different video, but that's basically the part of the hood of the poncho itself there. And they just button together both sides. So here's one poncho, this side, here's the other poncho, that side, and they button together. And obviously on one side, you leave the button slightly open because that will be the door. You can, even, you can even see the arm flaps here, which I've sealed down and button down because obviously if it rains, I don't want that coming through into the tent. The poles themselves come in these, there's two, two poles, well four all together, two in each canvas bag with a button holding the loop together. And you don't actually, these are the ridge pole, but you don't actually have to use these as a ridge pole. That just slides off like that. And it's really neat, like even the, the tent pegs there, they just fit, they're, they're, they're curved, so they fit. These are just held together by elastic, but they fit especially in there and you just give them a tug and as you can see, they're, they're curved so that they pinch in there, so it all, it's all compact. That end goes in like that. That's half the centre pole. The canvas tent itself is pretty heavy. If you were backpacking, you probably wouldn't carry this tent with you because it is canvas and it is heavy. It's a Polish military tent. I believe they used it, I think, in the 70s. This is it. You know, they're, they're fairly lightweight to me. They don't make much of a difference. However, I've brought them with me just to show you guys, but I'm going to make my ridge pole out of a stick, just a straight stick. Um, and I've got my measurement here, so I'm just going to find a stick that's this long now. I'll peg all the edges in first. I could make my own pegs, but these have little rivets in them, so they're very thin. I could just use sticks, but... Might as well use the pegs while they're there. They're not exactly cumbersome, they're not that much heavier. As this is the part going into the top of the canvas, I'm just gonna bevel it or chamfer it a bit so that it doesn't damage the top of the, the roof of the canvas too much.
There you go. Much rounder. There's the finished tent with it shut. That's the entrance. It goes up, to, I'm only small, so it goes up to about my neck. That would be the back. As you can see, there's the arm slot of one poncho. Sealed the back end down there. This flap just goes over like that. So the tent's all set up and I'm going to get the fire going in a minute. But I've had so many questions from you guys about my backpack lately. Most of you will have noticed that in the past couple of videos, at least for the last few months, I've been using a brand new backpack, which is most unlike me. So I was having a look online and I eventually stumbled across this backpack. And the guys over at Military First, they sent me this backpack. They're sponsoring the video, so thanks very much, guys. I really appreciate it. One of the main things that I needed in the pack was I'm kind of looking for a pack that would suit me as a day pack and a uh, overnight pack as well in one sort of package rather than have two two backpacks. So this is the V Sport Woodcraft in brown. Um, it looks like it's spelt We Sport, but because it's Polish they pronounce it I believe V Sport. Hopefully I've got that correct. It's made of tough Cordura fabric which I love in backpacks. I think my previous one was made of Cordura uh, which is super durable. It's resistant to scratches and things like that. Something that I obviously need with axes and knives around. Um, I wanted it in brown because it's something different. I've, all my other backpacks were in green. But the two main features of a backpack that I was really looking for were, firstly, a top loops, loops on the top and loops on the bottom. That was so important for me because that meant that I could hang my sleeping bag or roll mat on either the top or the bottom of the bag and then have all that space inside free for all my other bits of gear. That was the main thing for me what, that I wanted in a backpack. The second thing is actually this pack, specific backpack, if I come down here, has a zip at the bottom, which you think is for a rain cover, but it's not. It's actually for a rifle, the butt of a rifle. And that way, if I come out with my air gun, my air rifle, the butt of it, of the stock, will go into that slot there. And then it's got these straps here, these nylon straps with little clips to be able to secure the rifle to the back of the, to the front of the bag, sorry. I've obviously used my axe here and just secured my axe to it. In this particular pocket here, I keep all my cook system. So I've got my canteen. Again, like I said, it's a nice tall one, nesting cup, little knife there. I keep my spoon the other side. I've got a wooden spoon that I carved uh, in a previous video. I keep that in here as well. Just the general kind of kitchen utensil bits. What I've done as well to make the zip easier to open is added some paracord. This is just cobra weaved paracord. It's called cobra weaving. And I like to put it on all my zips on my backpacks because it makes it a lot easier to just, with speed, be able to open the backpack nice and quickly. Uh, and obviously if you're getting to a first aid kit or a trauma kit that you need to get to quickly, this is pretty essential. So it's dead handy, makes opening the zip a lot easier. So in this side pocket, again, Cobra Weave on the zip, I've got my tools. So I've got my knife and sheath there, my Virtus Utilis. I've got my Mora 120 carving knife, one more, I think it's the 164 crook knife, spoon knife. Need to get a sheath for that. Pocket bellows to get the fire going. And my Grancis Brooks puck for sharpening my grinding puck for sharpening the axe. So that's kind of tool maintenance. Again, all in the side po pocket, nice and easy to access. It's got a good carry loop here, D loop, nice and easy to hang. Uh, some load straps to, to you know tighten the load onto the uh, to, to your shoulders a bit tighter or loosen it so to shift the weight from your shoulders to your hip and then it's got in the top pocket here I've not cobra weaved this yet this is it but it's got a top pocket which I keep my trauma kit Israeli bandage so it's really fast easily accessible uh, things like coffee things uh, a rag as well again if I'm bleeding fast I need to get to a rag or if I need to just general wash stuff I've got a rag there and other little bits like head torch things like that if I take that out that's just my sort of pillow 
Uh, it's got a storm flap or a snow flap like that, which means I can tighten this. It basically keeps everything inside water, even more waterproof. So you can tighten that and that, look, that, that's almost sealed. And then the second one, do up. And then you've got much less chance of snow and everything like that getting in there. I believe it's called a snow flap. Uh, but the other thing that this does is it allows you to stack it up into the bag an extra six to eight inches. I think it's about six inches up here which means that if I'm doing overnighters, I've got even more space in my backpack because the top lid, I can loosen and it will expand up like this and raise up to allow me to fit even more gear inside. So you can see here, it's got seriously good padding. I mean, that's, that's almost an inch thick padding. The other thing that's great about these hip pads as well is if you secure them together, they actually act as like a stand to help lean your backpack and keep it upright. So there, if I push my backpack back, it doesn't rock back, it just stays upright because it's leaning. If you do it up here, it's leaning against these straps. So just a little tip there for those guys up there with backpacks that have a hip belt on them. In my opinion, it's pretty much the perfect backpack for me anyway, but there are a few drawbacks. Uh, it doesn't come with a rain cover, uh, which I do generally need but that's okay because I can just either make my own or use one from an old backpack that's fine uh, but it is quite handy to have so it doesn't have a rain cover and the other thing is there's a lot of kind of dangly straps around which can get frustrating if if that frustrates you but a way of countering that is what I've done here where is it one of these straps I think it's over here there you go what I've done to counter this dangly backpacks I'll do a video on it at some point is made some little velcro fasteners and all they are is two bits of velcro and if I roll that out it just keeps there there's two pieces of velcro here if I focus the camera if it will focus that's all I've done I've sewn those in just stitched them in by hand no thermal mattress for this trip because it's still autumn it's still mild it's about 12 degrees it's double figures so it's cheap bedroll really cheap five pounds I think this was Five squidarinis. I think I'm going to lie across the back. That way I've got room to do stuff here at the front. I'm really surprised at how much room's in there actually. So my sleeping bag came in a red bag, sort of a red stuff sack, which I wasn't really a fan of but it is a down sleeping bag. And what I've done is I've whacked it in a, in a green dry sack. So it keeps it completely dry. And just cause it's a bit, you know, it's a bit of a less of a layery color. So something really awesome that I got in the post recently is the YouTube silver play button uh, or the plaque that you can get for hundred thousand subscribers, which is awesome. So I just wanted to thank you guys uh, for subscribing to the channel if you have. Um, I dropped a little cheeky video on my Instagram page. If you're not on Instagram, there's a link in the video description to my Instagram. But I did a, a video on my unboxing of that silver butt play button on Instagram. And I also posted a picture on my Instagram as well. I'm also on Facebook as well. There's links in the video description below. Tent set up, sleeping bag set up. Uh, now I'm gonna get an area cleared for the fire. Just gonna clear this general area get camp nice and tidy. There's so much leaf litter, so much leaf litter around. Bushcraft heroes and their leaf litter. Don't know why, but whenever I'm kicking leaves like this, I always feel my knees starting to twist, the actual ligaments. I did a lot of sport when I was I say younger, a couple of years ago, I stopped doing my sport, but I used to play sport all the time. Football, rugby, hockey, all that stuff. And my knees have been buggered a bit from it. And whenever I try to do this to clear the knees, it sends twinges down the side of my kneecaps. Maybe you guys get the same. Let me know. Doesn't matter that I've left some leaves there. To be honest, the ground is really wet. We've had quite a bit of rain recently. We're back end of November at the moment here in the UK. And yeah, the ground's just soaked, so I don't have to worry about the forest floor catching fire. But it's always better to be safe and clear an area. That'll do, Peggy. That'll do. 
found a really good piece of uh, birch. It's literally fallen down fairly recently, so it's not rotten at all. But I, I've been sawing it from quite a bit of fair away, away, and I didn't take my camera with me. So I've chopped it up into about a 10 foot length. Now I'm gonna process this down, and I've got myself some firewood. End bit's a bit rotten. I'm making these into about six to eight inches because that's enough for my, uh, I've only bought a hatchet with me and that's enough for that to process. So I've chopped up that uh, bit of silver birch over there and I've also found some smaller birch which I'm going to batten down to use to start the fire because ideally those sort of logs I want to burn throughout the evening. I'm not going to burn a fire all night but definitely throughout the evening. But that was tiring so time to get some water. Ah, oh, it's good. Um, What's oh, cold? So that is Hobbit home for the, tonight. Almost there. Obviously, I've got to get fire going, and I've got my lantern, my few hand hurricane lantern. Few, few hand, few hand. How do you say it? Few, few hand. Um, made in Germany. These awesome, awesome things. Run on paraffin, or well, mine does anyway. Because I used this in Camp Update 12. Hopefully you guys saw that. And I might even get a little stick actually to hang it from. Yeah, let's go get a stick. Starting to get towards dusk now. It's 3.15 and yeah, it's, it's an overcast day anyway. So things are gonna get dark a little bit quicker today. But I boosted the ISO on the camera so it looks a bit brighter than it is. But I'm quite happy with camp setup. Let's get this stick for that lantern. That'll do. I think it's a piece of rhododendron actually. Almost certain. That's a good height. Let's chamfer this point. I want to keep it near the shelter so I can get some light at least. That's pretty good. Ka ching Yeah, that'll be. Awesome, chopping log. Get in there boys. And girls. Found this big old piece of oak, I think it is. I'm not sure, it's really rotten. But that'll act as a real decent chopping log to be able to split the wood on. Nice and easy, right next to camp. Don't have to go very far. It's getting cozy up in here.
So it's starting to get dark now and I brought my trail cam along with me because this time I've figured I'm gonna aim it at the tent to see if anything approaches the tent at night, any animals. Um, but I've caught loads of animals on this thing in the past. I've just put fresh batteries in it. So I'm gonna tie it to, a, there's a couple of trees facing the tent. So I'm gonna tie it to one of those, maybe one that's directly in front because that way I can see any animals that come up to the fire or something in the night. It'd be interesting to see anyway. And if I get any footage, I'll show you guys in this video. Yeah, I think that's level anyway. Wind's picking up. I'm not gonna put it on just yet because otherwise I'm just recording myself all the time. Let's put it on test. And yeah, I can see camp quite easily. So I'll keep it off for the moment and I'll turn it off when I go to bed. But the angles will set anyway. Back. Did some feather sticks, the camera ran out of battery, it's about to run out again, but it's got some feather sticks. Hopefully they will light. There we go. That gust of wind really helps it then. Building the teepee. Getting dark now, boys. When I'm lighting the your hand. Sorry about the light guys, I'll get better light in a minute. I usually just get a stick, tiny thin stick, get that flame under near the wick. That's now lit. Like that. I'll put the glass down there. And there we go. It's got a little, can you guys see this? Yeah. Camp is looking good boys and girls. So we've got the fire going and I'm having to use a big camera light at the moment, free hand, so I've got to open my food bag with one hand to show you guys what I have got. I've got some homemade spaghetti bolognese made by my good wife. It doesn't look like very much there but it's actually delicious. To go with that there's obviously tomatoes, mushrooms, onion, garlic, peppers in there, mint, bolognese sauce. I've got some chestnut mushrooms to go with that, which I'm gonna slice up in a minute and put those with the spaghetti bolognese. Spaghetti bolognese, when's the yordo meal day? Uh, also, to go in that, I have some spicy sausage, chorizo, chorizo, some people call it, I call it chorizo. So this is my new Billy Can case, 10 centimeters zebra Billy, it's waxed canvas made by my good buddy Tim at Blue Angelical. I'll pop a link to his stuff in the video description below. Tim makes some awesome stuff. He's been really kind to me over the years. Uh, it's got a reinforced D-ring here. Sorry, it's a bit dark, but that's to stop the cordage tearing into the waxed canvas itself. But this is the 10 centimeters zebra Billy version. As you can see, as you open it, it's got this flap which obviously keeps the dirt out, keeps everything out. And it is an absolute snug fit. It's really good. It's a snug fit for the, the billy can. And he does them to all different size zebra billies and I think other billies as well if you want a custom order. But he does all the zebra billy range. That Now this is what's awesome about this. So there's my billy in the top lid. He's got another mini pouch, a small pouch here. Again with a draw cord and I'm gonna call it a dirt flap. Don't know what it's called, but a dirt flap. And in there, I've got my morning porridge. And that sits, that little bag there, sits in the top of my belly. And then underneath, there's another bag. 
in here, which perfectly fits, it's all custom made for the 10 centimeters of everybody. Another bag there, if I open it up, sorry for the shade and the light. Another dirt flap, I'm gonna call it, don't know what it's called, dust flap in there. All my pasta. So Billy, I'm gonna rest on these two pieces of birch. Hopefully they stay, get that boiling. But I also need to leave space for the bolognese, which I'm gonna put in the frying pan. Just gonna cut some chestnut mushrooms up. And there we go. Burnt the uh, bolognese a bit too much. Not to worry though. All goes down the same. I can tell you now it's looking awesome. And it is tasting. Mmm. Just as good. Better than it looks actually. This has got Italian seasoning on as well. Pepper. So rotten. So I've had my pasta bolognese, that was really good. And I've put a couple of more logs on the fire, but I'm not letting it burn up really, really big today because it's going only going down to about 12, uh, 10 degrees tonight, 10, 11 degrees. So really warm this time of year. And yeah, I'm gonna have myself a beer, I think. Loving the Lavu so far, the Polish Lavu. It's my first night in this Polish Lavu, uh, this little mini canvas tent. And yeah, I know this, uh, they've got a big, they're very popular. Um, they're really sort of on my Instagram when I'm on Instagram a lot. There's um, I see a lot of pictures of the Lavu, and I've always wanted one just looking at those pictures. And now I've finally got one, uh, I'm really enjoying it. Enjoying it so far. Hopefully, I get a good night's sleep. I've, I'll show you the inside setup in a minute, but this is my view just so you guys can see. I've put those two Y sticks for a cooking setup tomorrow, which I'll do, but gonna let that fire die down now. No point letting it go up, let it die down. I don't need it for heat, I don't need it to cook. I'm just gonna enjoy the ambient embers and crack open a beer. Over here, I've got my little lantern set up. Obviously I've got the doors open because that will emit a, a bit of a gas that, so. But I don't wanna have it with the tent closed. But if I turn that off, gives the uh, nice ambient lighting in the, the levee. Loads you can do on it, there's little loops there. Just hanging off, I hang my head torch from this loop here. It's just hanging up, hanging up there. Yeah, life is good. Life is good, Lavu life. There's my beer if you spotted it, some of you. Beer of choice today is actually from my buddy, Hayes Outdoors. So thank you, Hazy. It's one of the ones he posted to me from the Northern Monk Brewery. Focus. And this is a bit of a beast, this. 10% packing a lot of that 10% Morello ch Morello cherry and Peruvian coffee Imperial Porter. Ooh, it sounds thick. Wow, that's just like an explosion of flavor. Coffee and all sorts. So it's just gone 10 o'clock and I'm pretty tired to be honest, so probably going to hit the sheets see what tomorrow brings me. I've got breakfast to cook up and I want to show you that uh, cooking setup, pot hanger setup that I've got which I haven't filmed yet on my channel so if you're still around I appreciate it and uh, maybe stick about and see that cooking setup for tomorrow. But things are looking cosy in here. I'm going to call it a night and I'll see you guys in the morning. Actually, slept, slept okay, not amazing. 
my pillow was playing up in the night, so I have a really stiff neck. Got myself some birch bark, as I'm in a birch forest, there's plenty of it. Put the fire steel to this. Thin, tiny twigs here, pencil thickness. <coughs> Thumb to finger thickness here. And some split wood, which you saw me doing earlier over here. Here we go. Whoa, it's so windy. that up a bit. You can see the flames instantly as you lift it up just rip through it. So this is my campfire setup or pot hanger setup. All it is simple almost like a spit really. Y-shaped stick. There's my pot hanger with a bail notch that I made earlier in the dark when it was more this morning. It's about eight o'clock now and that just sits perfectly above the fire. Obviously I'll build the flames up a bit more. But porridge this morning. Some of the oats so simple, Quaker oats, golden syrup, and actually I figured when I did my mountain camp I did this all wrong, but you tear the packet, get rid of all the rubbish in there, this is the magic part, pour your oats in, and it's got a fill line, so you just, it says pour milk to here, but obviously I've not brought milk with me, so I'll pour the water up to there, and then I know, I'll go over the top a little bit. And that's exactly how much water I need to make a decent porridge. I've always overdone it with water. So I'm happy with that. Put the lid on. Get him over. Se voila. Now I'll just readjust these twigs. Push that that way a bit. And that will get the flame right under. So I've got enough wood here anyway to get this, this flame up near the bottom of the billy can. Obviously there's a bit of wind, so I'm gonna allow for that. Put it slightly to the right. And there we go. That's, that flame came up like that just because of I was picking up all the twigs that had fallen off the fire just round the edge and chucking them on the middle and that centralises the flame again underneath the billy can and it should be cooking in no time feel the heat off that look at that look at that ulti goodness boy that's looking fresh mm. Getting windy, it's meant to be 40 mile an hour tomorrow night, uh, so a bit unsafe really. Any dead trees, they would definitely be coming down. But look at the background, guys. That is autumn at its best. Golden floor. Birch, I find silver birch leaves tend to go kind of golden yellow. Oak goes a bit more orange, beech goes a bit more sort of orange yellow. But look at that, that is just stunning. That is what it's all about, isn't it, guys? Autumn leaves everywhere. Autumn, or the fall, is my favourite time of year to camp because all the bugs go, you know, it's nice fresh mornings, fresh cold evenings, you can have a fire for warmth as well as cooking, whereas summer is more fire for sort of cooking. Oh, I just love it. And I'm really chuffed with my Lavu. Absolutely chuffed with that. And my whole setup actually, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the setup. So I've got big plans on the channel for uh, a project actually with my dad. We're gonna do a sort of father-son project. It's really cool. I've not kind of seen it done before in the style that we're doing it. So hopefully you guys will enjoy it. It will be a big project. It will be a kind of series that we're going to do on the channel, uh, but we'll break it up with other videos in between. Hopefully you guys will enjoy it anyway. It should be fun. It's, you know, it gives me time to, sp to spend with my dad, uh, which I enjoy doing a lot, as he's the one who inspired me to get outdoors in the first place. But yeah, hopefully you enjoy that series. It'll probably be coming in a few weeks. So just while I'm letting the fire burn down, you know, to leave no trace and let all the coals burn down, I've got a little project, carving project. 
going for a coffee spoon this time. I've made a start on it um, last night. I didn't film it because it's just dark and it's pointless, but there we go. I think I'm on the, I've done the actual bowl. I wanted a deep bowl for lots of coffee. You can see that. This is a piece of um, birch, silver birch. I'm probably not gonna be able to finish this spoon in this video, guys, but I'll either show you a cutaway clip of the finished spoon now, where I've done it at home, or carry on watching TA Outdoors, and I'll show it in a future video. Just trying to get that shoulder in there. Well, guys, that is almost the finished spoon, coffee scoop. But obviously I've got to sand it down, oil it, refine it a bit. But you can see the gist of it, of the shape that I was going for. Um, anyway, I think I'm going to close the video out now. Fire's pretty much out. A couple of small coals left, I'm going to pour some water on it. Get the tent packed up, uh, get the lantern away, put everything in the backpack. And then probably head on out, because winds are coming up now. Um, you might have heard it in the microphone, but it's forecasted 40 mile an hour winds tonight. so fairly strong but that was a really nice camp I really enjoyed that hopefully you guys enjoyed that too uh, if you did I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel if you're not already and uh, maybe give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it there's plenty more videos to come thanks for watching guys and I'll see you soon